Okay, I stuck the neck in it. It's a loose, loose bit compared to the other ones I got. The other one I got, you can literally rock it around. Uh, it's not too bad though once you settle it in. And I think it'll clamp in in the right position. But uh, it's a questionable quality down there underneath. I'm going to have to make some more surface area on the bottom of the neck or something. Um, the top, I went over with some, uh, I don't know, what is it, uh, 400 grit. Went over the whole surface of this flame maple real lightly and removed all the loose grain. It's pretty smooth now. It's at least as smooth as the other one I finished. Um, I'm having trouble getting rid of the burn marks up there. I might just leave them. They don't look too bad. It looks almost like grain. Uh, there's a little spot right here. It looks like dirt, but it's actually part of the wood. So I don't know. It's I'm gonna leave it there. So then we got a little thing right here. It looks like a zit or something. <laughs> That's the part of the wood too. It's like I don't know what it is, but hey, it, it's there. It belongs there. It's staying there. I can't try to sand it out because it'll ruin the plain maple. Other than that, it don't look too bad. Matter of fact, I, I every flame top I ever messed with seemed to have something wrong with it like that. So even my spotlight made by Epiphone Gibson has a big crack running through the it was it's it's not a crack it's actually a dark long deep grain but anyway uh the neck goes in and out way too easy um turning it over the back I've been doing some sanding on it it's got some areas where you can see there they must have been using like 80 grit or something. You can see it. But the more I hit it, the less it looks. Hopefully by the time I get done messing with it, it'll just look like nice smooth wood. Mahogany, I guess I'm supposed to grain fill it. I'm not a big woodworker or anything, but so I'm gonna go buy some water-based grain, clear grain filler, and see what happens. Uh, I got rid of most of the glue Except for that, I missed that. I have to hit that. And this right here, this is really disappointing. I don't know what to do about that. Uh, it looks horrible. I sat there and sanded it and sanded it, and it doesn't make any difference. And I know it's not wood grain or anything. Well, I'll just keep working on it. Maybe I can get it to go away. Okay, I. Did some messing around with this neck pocket. Uh, I mentioned in an earlier video it was really loose on the unboxing. And it was. It was loose, 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 goose. Man, it was just loose. Uh, now I got it so I can actually hold it by the neck and it's not even glued in. I mean, what I did is uh, <clears throat> I took a piece of cardboard. which is actually off a donut box. I couldn't find anything else that fit just right. That and one sheet of... Uh, so, I don't know, it's a notepad, a little tiny square notepad. I just cut them to the right shape, stuck them in there. There's a little bit of a gap still, but I'm, I'm thinking that probably glue will ooze out and fill that. And if you really look hard, you can actually see a little bit of the shim right there in the corner. But uh, it don't look too bad. It, it'll fill out with some glue. and It's a nice tight fit now. Uh, when I clamp it in there, it's going to be... It's going to be in there. It'll be in the right place. I already measured the length. They got the length right on in China. So that's one good thing anyway. You know, what I did is I took the piece of cardboard and the piece of paper and I sandwiched them together with glue. Real thin layer of Elmer's glue. And then I glued the two of them to the inside of the guitar body. And then when I do make the final glue up the neck will join up to the paper that's in there. It's It's cellulose it's the same thing as wood should conduct fairly soon similarly I hope <laughs> anyway it'll, it's a nice tight fit and it should clamp really good okay picture this guitar here it's, that's what it looks like pretty much with the hardware on it except for I don't have the tuners on yet but picture this guitar here with a purple darker purple dark purple but translucent still so you can see the flame 
going into a sort of a blue, dark blue through here. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to try to achieve on the top. It'll be a fade, dark, dark purple or blue in the middle. And uh, oops, <laughs> hopefully it comes out looking at least as nice as the the guitar fetish 335 that I did. I don't know. We'll see. I might just leave those knobs on. Those are kind of neat. I didn't think they'd be that color, but uh, that might look really good with purple and blue. So, the knobs might stay. The surrounds might stay. I've taken and traced out the shapes of the back cover, uh, the two back cover plates in Perloid. Um, I'm going to put a, I'm going to actually put my own design little pick guard and then this stuff right here right here so it's like my other guitars that's got white pick guards I'm not sure exactly what shape it's going to be and final caveat maybe will be to cover the headstock in this stuff I don't know we'll see if I can get away with it I'll try it I don't know I don't know if the tuners will and the thickness of it will allow me I could get radical and take the whole thing to work and mill it down by the thickness of this stuff. But that's kind of, I don't know, that's kind of kind of risky. So I, I'm probably if it, if it won't work, then it won't work. You know, I just I won't put it on. But we'll see. I was mentioning about the spacer, uh, the shim that I put in there. Uh, I took the neck out so I could show what I did. It's just two, it's a sandwich of one piece of paper and one piece of cardboard and it's glued on there and then what I'm going to do is slather it up real good with glue so it should be just like you know practically a piece of wood I can't see any problem with it. I don't think it's going to deaden the tone or anything it's going to be, it's going to you know, be glue impregnated, impregnated cellulose so Everything should be just fine. Actually, it's already partially impregnated with glue. It's got glue between the wood, the paper, and the cardboard. So, it's already part of the guitar. Okay, it's my little back covers I made out of the pearloid stuff. I haven't, I haven't drilled the holes yet, but I got them to fit in the cavities. I had to leave a little space right here because you, you got to be able to pry the damn thing out of there so you can stick a little screwdriver in and wedge it out other than that it's a perfect fit all the way around a little here a little gap right here very small gap but anyway yeah if you're smart you'll leave a little a little gap so you can get something in there and pick it out of there if you have to but anyway it looks really nice i think and uh i'm going to make a matching pick guard and maybe a headstock covering for for this thing out of that too well, just in case you were wondering, the, the way I get that those guards, or the, the cover shaped is on this here. I do the heavy grinding to get them all out of the stuff off. First on the one, then I move to this one for the fine stuff. And I, uh, to cut it larger, the larger pieces down, so I can actually use, I use just a angle grinder. Okay, I spent a few minutes uh, coming up with a pick guard shape. Uh, this is going to be my pick guard. I think I'm going to elevate it a little bit down here like they do with the uh, ES-335s. Since this is an arch top. Okay, I ran into a little problem when I was putting the neck on. Uh, first off, I measured from the inside of the nut to the middle of the uh, bridge mounting hole. And it was 1 16th of an inch longer than 24 and 3 quarters. So, be that as it may, before that happened, I stuck the neck in before I did any trimming, and the pickup that came with it wouldn't fit. That was before I even shortened the neck. But uh, the reason it wouldn't fit was it had this cover on it, and the cover was so poorly soldered on that the back of it was all warped out outwards like spread out and I couldn't fit the pick up between the neck and the, the body and I don't want to reroute it so I decided I'd take the cover off so there it is gone pickup looks better I think uh, 
I took its front neck pickup. I, sh I shielded it to replace that tin thing with uh, with some copper tape, and it actually fits in now. Uh, plus, like I said, the neck was too short. I mean, too long, so I had to shorten it up a sixteenth of an inch. So what I did is I took it on my sander, my grinder, and I ground the stub, the tenon down a little bit at the end. Yes, I kept did it real careful, and I kept measuring until I got it exactly 24 and three quarters. And then I checked to make sure I could get this in, but I also had to grind this part down with where the binding is. So the binding is almost gone. I left just a little bit on, and the reason I had to do that is because the white of the pickup interferes with the neck. So these Chinese boogers, they didn't do a very good job with their routing and placement. And the neck that they selected for this doesn't really fit it. I had to make everything fit and it took a lot of work, way more than the uh, guitar fetish one did. Also these pickups, uh, they're wax potted. I, I could tell they were because when I was soldering them, there was wax running all over the place. Or when I was desoldering them. But anyway, the, the wax potting is really sloppy. It was all over in there. And that's not all from me doing the soldering. It was just all over inside there. So I took the covers off and I found out they're at least wax potted so I don't have any harmonic problems. I hope. Okay, it's early in the morning here. It's kind of dark in the room. But anyway, I, I used a coping saw like I did on the other guitar I built and cut out the rough shape of the headstock. And I got a piece of crap coping saw so you don't want to get too close to the lines because you'll go right over my guarantee. Anyway, I got that close. And then I'm going to... I did this wing with the sander and this wing with the sander. And I'm going to finish filing here with a with a file or rasp and the reason I use a rasp is because it's nice and coarse and it cuts quickly you don't have to mess around it just goes right through it and you get your shape okay I ended up taking the other cover off the other pickup so now I got two bare bobbin pickups and they look good that way uh, that's my pick guard that I made and I decided that I'm going to put pearl lucent cover on the uh, up here on the headstock so it follows the contour and I'm going to have to make holes for the peg heads. I think I'm going to make the holes big enough that the actual washers for the tuners sit on the wood and I'll, everything will just be now I'll, I'll have a cutout right here for my uh, adjustment rod yeah, pretty much that's about it. Uh, one other thing I'm doing is, since there's a irreparable, I mean I've tried to sand it down so I'm getting into the, making the binding down to nothing here. There's a big huge glue or wax or whatever it is they wear, put the binding on with. Big huge spot that I can't get rid of by sanding. So I'm going to surround the whole guitar with tape. And I'm going to put a silver leaf all the way around the edge, just below the white binding. So it's going to be white and then silver. And actually, I think it'll look pretty nice that way. Okay, I said I was going to put some silver leaf around the edge of the guitar because of that glue that I couldn't get sanded off. So, uh, this side's fairly good. Uh, it's got, no, this is the bad side. I, I have some repair work to do on this one because it's wood and I had a hard time sticking the glue soaked in. Uh, but this other side came out really nice. It's a nice even line. And where the glue was, got covered really nice, but I have some repair work to do up here too. 
so you can't you really can't see the glue anymore and that side is real rough that's where I first started out that's all I had to do is remask the edge and re-glue and re <laughs> relief relief so anyway that's what I'm going to do I'm going to finish that and uh I have another little short video of something I did with the neck coming out. Here's what I decided to do with the headstock. It matches the pit guard and the, the back plates. It's a pearl I cover. I have it bolted on or screwed on with five screws. And then I cut some five-eighths holes for the tuner pegs to come through. Uh, I think it looks pretty nice. It's definitely unique. And that's my standard shape for a headstock there so it's coming along well we're looking at this perloid um, headstock cover I made it's like a veneer almost but anyway I'm gonna have to cut a shape out of it right in there so I can get to my truss rod I'll put three more little tiny bolts to hold that in I'm not sure what shape the cut's going to be, but it'd probably be something simple like a triangle. Okay, here's a little sneak peek of uh, what's to come. This is going to be purple fading to blue with what you see on it right now. And this is sort of my, I don't know, Paul Reed Smith takeoff, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, that's it so far. It's just with things laid in place. Give you an idea of what it's going to look like.